Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I'll be discussing about rectangular wave guide with great clarity. Before I start with explanation, let me show you how many points that I'm going to cover in this video. See, first of all, I'll be discussing about basics of rectangular wave guide. After that, I'll explain you how to identify cutoff frequency and cutoff wavelength with rectangular wave guide. And in that, I'll also explain what are the conditions for wave propagation. After that, I'll explain you checking of modes in rectangular wave guide. This topic is quite interesting. I request you to see this topic in this video. After that, I'll explain you how to identify intrinsic wave impedance of rectangular wave guide. After that, I'll discuss about phase velocity and group velocity of rectangular wave guide. And at last, I'll explain you how to identify guided wavelength of rectangular wave guide. So these are the points that I'm going to cover. Let us begin this session with first agenda that is basics of rectangular wave guide. Wave guide is hollow metallic tube. If you observe here, we have hollow metallic tube and with rectangular wave guide, we have rectangular hollow metallic tube. In waveguide, we transmit EM wave using successive reflection from the inner walls. So whatever signal that we incident over here, that is getting transmitted through this waveguide based on reflection from the walls. Rectangular waveguide is having less attenuation loss compared to transmission line. That's why waveguides are widely used. It is having lower attenuation loss compared to transmission line. In early 1990s and in 1980s, people were using transmission line. But with waveguide, there are many essential advantages. That's why nowadays in satellite, in many other microwave taste bench, you will be observing we are using waveguides. And particularly we use rectangular waveguide. The rectangular waveguide that allows only TE and TM modes. It does not allow TEM mode. If you want to understand why it is not allowing TEM mode, then for that I have made separate video, just go through it. One should know rectangular waveguide only allows transverse electric mode and transverse magnetic mode. Here, dominant mode of rectangular waveguide is TE10. Dominant mode means the mode which is having lowest cutoff frequency. So here, see I have mentioned TEMN. And I have mentioned TMMN where M is equals to 1 and N is equals to 0 means TE10 is having M is equals to 1 and N is equals to 0 that is having lowest cutoff frequency. Here based on dimensions also one can understand that see this dimension that is having width A and this dimension that is having width B with respect to B suffix is n and with respect to a suffix is m. So with te10 m is equals to 1 and n is equals to 0 where cutoff frequency is lowest with dominant mode. How it is lowest that I'll explain you now by explaining formulas of cutoff frequencies and cutoff wavelength. Cutoff frequency and cutoff wavelength is based on operating mode of rectangular waveguide. I have told you with rectangular waveguide, we have only TE and TM mode. So with this TE and TM mode, first of all, we need to identify cutoff frequency. And that cutoff frequency is based on order, where order is defined by M and AND. If you want to identify cutoff frequency, then basic equation is FC that is equals to T divided by 2 into square root of m by a whole square plus n by b whole square where n and m that defines order of mode if you want to identify cut of wavelength lambda c then that is 2 a b divided by square root of m square b square plus n square a square Using this equation, we can identify cutoff frequency and cutoff wavelength with given order. Let me take one example. Here I have told you with rectangular waveguide, we have dominant mode that is TE10. 
dominant mode means the mode which is having lowest cutoff frequency. So if you take example of dominant mode, then for TE10 mode, one should know TE MN is there, means M is equals to 1 and N is equals to 0. If you substitute M is equals to 1 and N is equals to 0, then you will be getting cutoff frequency for TE10 mode. If you substitute M is equals to 1 and N is equals to 0 in this, then you will be getting cutoff frequency that is T divided by twice A. And if you want to calculate cutoff wavelength for TE10 mode, then if you place M is equals to 1 and N is equals to 0 in this equation, then you will be getting lambda C TE10 that is twice A. So based on order of mode, we can identify cutoff frequency and cutoff wavelength. Now question is, why should we identify cutoff frequency and cutoff wavelength. Let me explain that. See here rectangular waveguide that we use it to transmit EM wave. So what we will be doing? We will be transmitting EM wave over here and with this EM wave let us say we have operating frequency F0 and based on operating frequency let us say operating wavelength is lambda naught. So whether this EM wave that can propagate over here or not that can be identified by cutoff frequency and cutoff wavelength. So first of all one should know what are the basic conditions. Let me explain that. See here lambda C that should be greater than lambda naught. Then only wave can get propagated through this rectangular waveguide right where this lambda C is cutoff wavelength. And this lambda naught is operating wavelength. And same thing that one can check using cutoff frequency. So here Fc that should be lower than F naught. So here Fc is cutoff frequency and F naught is operating frequency. So based on value of operating frequency and cutoff frequency or operating wavelength and cutoff wavelength, one can identify whether that signal can pass through this rectangular waveguide or not. So to understand how signal is propagating through rectangular waveguide, whether it is possible or not, you need to check mode scene sequence. Let me explain how we can check mode scene sequence. Checking of modes that is happening based on lowest cutoff frequency to highest cutoff frequency. Or one can say checking of mode is done based on highest cutoff wavelength to lowest cutoff wavelength. So here as and when you do checking of modes at a time first of all you will have to check for lowest cutoff frequency or highest cutoff wavelength. So first of all we need to see what could be the lowest cutoff frequency. So I have already told you TE10 mode that is having lowest cutoff frequency. After that we need to check for TE01 mode. After that, we need to check for TE11 mode. After that, we need to check for TE21 mode. After that, we need to check for TE12 mode. After that, we need to check for TE22 mode and so on. So this is what the order of checking where here we have lowest cutoff frequency and as you change the mode here cutoff frequency will increase or one can say this is the mode that is having highest cutoff wavelength and as you increase the order of mode you will be observing wavelength is decreasing over here. This is what I have told you about TE mode. Now same thing that I will explain you for TM mode. So here with TM mode also we have same modes but here we have transverse magnetic mode where order will be happening like this only but there are few basics that one need to understand. See here numbering of M and N that will be having same result right there won't be any change but there are few basics that you need to understand like you see here here with T M10 and TM01, 
दिस मोड्स आर नॉट पॉसिबल द रीजन इज दो आर इवन स्कैंट मोड सो दीज आर द मोड्स दैट इज नॉट पॉसिबल सो विथ टी एम मोड वी डोंट नीड टू चेक दिस एज दिस मोड्स आर नॉट पॉसिबल एंड एज एन वेन यू चेक फोर पॉसिबिलिटीज ऑफ मोड्स एट दैट टाइम मिनिमम यू विल हैव टू चेक फोर टी ई वन जीरो टी ई जीरो वन एंड टी ई वन वन लाइक यू सी इफ यू हैव ऑपरेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी लेट अस से यू हैव ऑपरेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी एफ नॉट राइट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल यू हैव टू चेक टी ई वन जीरो मोड सी दिस टी वन जीरो मोड फ्रीक्वेंसी दैट शुड बी लोअर देन एफ नॉट इफ इट इज लोअर देन यू हैव टू चेक फॉर सेकेंड मोड टी ई जीरो वन इफ इट इज ऑल्सो लोअर देन एफ नॉट then you'll have to check for te11 after that if it is possible then you'll have to check for this mode but here minimum checking that has to be done with this three modes right so as and when you solve problem at that time you'll have to do checking for this three modes at least here one more thing that you need to understand the cut off frequency for te11 and tm11 that is same cut off frequency for te21 and tm21 that is also same right so here it is not like you will have to calculate cut off frequency separately for te11 and tm11 the cut off frequency is based on order so here mn that defines order and that mn and that we need to place in this two equations to identify cut off frequency and cut off wavelength right so as and when you want to check for operating frequency whether it is possible or not at that time you'll have to check for cut off frequencies of different modes where condition is this f not that should be greater than this cut off frequencies and if you check with respect to wavelength then operating wavelength that should be lower than cut off wavelength right that is how one can check now i'll explain you intrinsic wave impedance of rectangular wave guide with rectangular wave guide only te and tm modes are possible with te mode if you want to identify intrinsic wave impedance then that can be calculated by basic equation that is eta te that is equals to 120 pi divided by square root of 1 minus fc divided by f whole square here fc by f that is equals to sin theta let me explain that t here fc by f that is equals to sin theta now question is what is theta see theta is tilt angle and that is based on how we incident signal in rectangular wave guide like you see here we have rectangular wave guide and that is side view now here let us assume we are sending signal over here right and that signal that is propagating based on internal reflection right if you want to identify theta then with respect to direction of propagation here angle of incident with respect to direction of propagation is theta so this theta that is tilt angle right so here sin theta is fc by f and based on that we can have further simplification of this equation that is 120 pi divided by square root of 1 minus sin square theta so 1 minus sin square theta is cos square theta if you take square root then that will be 120 pi divided by cos theta right and if you want to identify intrinsic wave impedance of tm mode then that is eta tm and that can be calculated by 120 pi into square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square here one should know this fc by f that is sin theta right and if you place this then you will be getting 120 pi into cos theta over here right that is how we can identify intrinsic wave impedance and one should know intrinsic wave impedance of tem mode that is 120 pi but tem mode is not possible in rectangular wave guide right so sometimes in competitive examination they may ask you 
like what is intrinsic wave impedance of TEM mode with rectangular waveguide then you will have to write it is not possible you don't need to write it is 125 right otherwise you will get false answer now I'll explain you phase velocity and group velocity of rectangular waveguide phase velocity and group velocity calculation is similar to parallel plate waveguide in my last video I have explained you parallel plate waveguide so if you have seen parallel plate waveguide video in that also I have explained phase velocity and group velocity equation that is similar over here so if you want to calculate phase velocity then phase velocity equation that is VP is equals to T divided by square root of 1 minus FC by F whole square and you can also calculate phase velocity based on cut off wavelength that is T divided by square root of 1 minus lambda naught divided by lambda c whole square right so based on cut off frequency and operating frequency or cut off wavelength and operating wavelength this equation explains you phase velocity if you want to calculate group velocity then that is vg that is c into square root of 1 minus fc by f whole square and that can be also calculated based on wavelength see that will be c into 1 minus lambda naught divided by lambda c whole square right so these are the equations that explains you calculation of phase velocity and group velocity if you want to understand relationship in between phase velocity and group velocity then that is simply vpvg that is equals to c square if you multiply this then the square root of 1 minus fc by f square that is getting cancelled so one can say vpvg that is equals to c square right and now i'll explain you calculation of guided wavelength see guided wavelength calculation that is lambda g that can be calculated based on operating wavelength divided by square root of 1 minus lambda naught by lambda c whole square so this equation is also very essential so in rectangular waveguide there can be equation based on guided wavelength calculation so one should know this equation as well as phase velocity and group velocity equations are also essential so now i think you are having fair enough idea about how modes are there how to calculate modes and what should be the checking of sequence of mode right so you just see this portion of video two times at least the reason is based on this portion in future you will be solving many problems so at that time it will be easier for you to have a calculation of those problems Still, if anything that I would like to share, just note it down in the comment section. I will be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.